Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the How to Deal with Artichoke episode. Uh, so tonight I'm making dinner and the, the, my issue is like there are days like these where I can't really plan a dinner based on a specific recipe because I have stuff in the fridge that I need to make and it doesn't always all go together but it needs to get done so the stuff I need to make is these artichokes okay I've already made some and prepared them I'm gonna I've, I've done like marinated purple artichokes um, marinated in olive oil um, I also have so I'll show you how to do that I also have these sweet potatoes I've got to do uh, and make and prepare and I'll show you um, a condiment that I uh, serve them with. So I'm just going to like roast these, like really simple. Uh, I'm not gonna actually do it now, but I'll roast them later. But I wanted to show you the condiment I make with them. And then I also have carrot tops. <laughs> and I don't know what to do with carrot tops. I had these beautiful, like a beautiful bunch of uh, carrots the other day from the grocer and these beautiful carrot tops and I didn't know what to do with them. And they're, they were still there and they're still there and I'm gonna be using them in different ways, but tonight I'm going to uh, uh, to put them in a hummus. So I'll also show you how to make hummus with carrot tops. Um, anyways, let's start with the artichoke. Artichokes are one of these things that for a long time I never really made because, and I'm talking, I'm not talking about the big globe artichokes, although I didn't really make those either, but it's these purple artichokes and they're, they come in varying sizes. Here in the south of France, you find the very tiny ones in spring, um, which are very delicious, and you can just kind of take the leaves off and cut them up really thin uh, and serve it with a like a, a salad dressing and eat it as a salad. Uh, you can like serve it raw, even as a crudité, you know, with a dip, because they are so young and tender. Now these ones, however, are not young. Uh, they're you see they're bigger and they're also a variety that's a little bit of, like a bigger variety you see but they're this beautiful purple color and um, and unfortunately I didn't make them right away so you see the leaves here are kind of on the brown side they're they're not ideal you know and life is not ideal and sometimes you forget stuff in your fridge and it's not ideal but it doesn't mean you need to throw it out it doesn't mean it's not any good it just means you need to make a recipe that will, you know, uh, work with it, right? So I'm not going to cut these up and eat them raw. So here's how I prepare these. I basically take, I start by taking away, taking off a lot of the leaves. Um, and this is a thing with artichokes. It's one of these veggies where you're like, oh my God, there is so much waste. Uh, when you make artichokes and um, I just, you know, for a long time, I think I subconsciously didn't buy them because I felt like, oh my God, you end up having to throw most of it away, <laughs> you know, and you only eat like less than half of it. Um, but I'm afraid this is just what it is. Um, if you really feel bad about, you know, throwing these out, then wash them, boil them in water and drink the water from them as a tea and it's a good cleanser and it's really good for your liver and all of that okay if that makes you feel better um otherwise just peel the heck out of it you see what's left here is not a whole lot right it's like it's all the tender leaves these are still still a little bit purple but they're very tender um and <laughs> i'm gonna take away more i'm gonna cut this in half okay even a little bit more than a half to be honest okay voila now you see close up there i need the light a bit to shine on these babies a bit more maybe can you see that better anyway so um but that's not over or it's not done what we've also you see so all of this <laughs> gets reduced to that and then what i do is you kind of you have to keep some of the stem but you need to peel quite a bit off so 
You could use a vegetable peeler. I like to just carve it out. And actually you should do it the other side that I'm doing it on. You should start from the bottom and then up to the top like that, yeah? So I'll do it a bit closer so you see. See, I'm doing kind of this sort of thing. Um, Cause you know, the stem you need to take quite a bit off. Um, there you go. And then what I do to make it a little bit, you know, nicer looking is I will take a vegetable peeler and then I will just kind of, you know, um, peel like around, you see, just to kind of make it all even and equal and pretty. All right. There we go. Now, this one doesn't have too much fuzz um, because it's these purple ones and this one was was not so big this one will be bigger so this one will have more fuzz and in which case I would scoop out the fuzz all right so what I do is I put this in water in which I've put lemon juice why and I'm just gonna leave it here so you see what I'm doing I'll do another one um, why do I do that because 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 otherwise they turn black okay they get oxidized it's like, you know, apples or whatever. If you put them and leave them out, they become brown and kind of yucky and murky, and that doesn't look good, okay? And uh, it's not very good. So again, I'm going to take all of this out. It's crazy, huh? Uh, take it all out um, until you're left with, you know, pretty tender leaves there. And then you cut off again half. And then, you know what I did the other day? You see, because there's like a pile of these, right? And they're like purple and green and whatever. And I had a vegetable, my vegetable peeler, and I had a mountain of these. And the last artichoke I did, I just kind of finished with a vegetable peeler and put it on the pile. And then I threw everything out of the garbage. And I didn't see the vegetable peel, peeler. And so I had to dig it back. It's pretty gross. But anyways, um... So just be careful where you put your, your peeler and your knife. So let me just do one more. And then what I do with these babies is that um, I just, I've put a, some, a pot of boiling water um, that's been salted. Okay. So you see, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to peel around to make it pretty and even. Okay. I chose the one that didn't have fuzz. So you see? Looks like this, right? Like that, like this, oh, like that, you see? Kind of, sort of. I swear one day I will get better lighting for these videos. So, I pop them in here just for show. I mean, you would have like a bunch of these, right? And then, um, and then I put them in hot water to boil for about five minutes. I've already prepared some, okay? So that you don't have to go through this whole five minute thing. Um, and, what I've done is I, I took them out of the water and right away I put them in icy cold water and I rinsed, I rinsed, I rinsed and I put like even like crushed ice and stuff to make sure to cool them down really quickly. Then what I did was that I, um, I uh, patted them dry once they were nice and cool and I put them in olive oil. See, and then all you need to put is some olive oil, some salt, some herbs, like dried herbs work really well. So I did that and I leave them here and you can cover these, put them in the fridge, keep them for like two days. They will they'll keep for two days. Um, and I like to serve them up as a side, like for lunch. They're really good. Like if you're doing like a grilled vegetable sandwich, you can like slice one up or you just cut them up, like slice them up and um, maybe put a, few, a bit of herbs and, uh, you know, some, maybe a little bit of crumble of, uh, like crumbled Parmesan. That can be nice. It could be like a little starter. There's so many ways to use these, you know, uh, and they're really delicious. So there you have it. That's my preparation. I hope I haven't forgotten to say anything, but if you have questions, please do comment in, um, in the comments of the video. Um, so that is my artichoke story. Now, next thing is I told you about the baked um, sweet potatoes, right? So I'm going to bake these. I roast them in the oven for like 45 minutes until they're all cooked. Um, 
And then what I do is I prepare this really nice condiment. So it's butter, okay? I use like this nice grass-fed butter that I will take. So I'll show you. I've done, I've done some here. And I mix it with one of like like one of these ingredients that I really love, and that's miso. So I took a chunk of butter, okay? Now, let me just I, I basically you know mash it with the back of a of a fork. And I unfortunately um not have the miso I wanted, okay? So I did this article following, I think it was last week's video where I tell you, oh, there's all these Asian foods where you need to like, they're really easy to make. There's all these Asian recipes that are easy to make, but you need a few staples in your pantry. And one of those staples that I like to use um, and then makes everything really taste so good is miso. And I like to use white miso and yellow miso because they're mellower um, now all i have is the red one left it's a very dark miso so if you ever by the way i did the list of pantry items you need if you're doing asian cooking and it's like the basic 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 stuff it's on the website so go check it out i think it's even on the home page right now um, otherwise it's in like food section or something um, so anyways if you're gonna only buy one type of miso, get the yellow one. It's very versatile, it has a nice taste, it's not as bold as the red one. The red one looks black, you see? It's it's this one. Um, the white miso is very good too. It's very, um, it's very subtle, it's very nice. I will often use either white or yellow um, in my recipes, but all I have is the red one. So, using the red one I won't use a lot so for that big chunk of butter which was about let's say a quarter cup I will put like a teaspoon maybe a bit more you know like yeah a teaspoon of this um, yeah I'll put a little bit more of the of the red one um, whereas I would put you know probably two teaspoons of the other one um, okay and that and then I mean adjust right you then need to like mix it really well just with the back of a fork as if you were mashing potatoes with the back of a fork <laughs> if you ever mash potatoes with the back of a fork i don't know if people do that but anyways you know what i mean and um and just kind of really really mix it well you get good quality butter for this um because it, it's just good quality butter you should always get good quality butter anyways you know you don't need to eat a lot of it um but things that i don't eat a lot of um and it's like a treat or whatever um i like to get like the good quality stuff all right so you've got this wonderful wonderful butter now what you can do with this butter is you can put it in a um like a, a saran wrap you know like a plastic wrap um and then just uh and then just freeze it like roll it up freeze it and then cut it up into slices and then you just plop it on your baked potato and it's so so good but you can also plop it on like steamed vegetables um you know or or just you know uh grilled vegetables on veggies in general but it goes so so well so look at this if you see this this miso butter okay right it looks like it's like super creamy it's really delicious um, and you can make it in advance and it stays in the fridge for a while. Um, so that's why you can freeze it. So I, uh, unless your fr butter was frozen before, but if you've got fresh butter, mix it with miso, roll it up in saran wrap and then put it in the freezer and then cut it up and, um, and use it as you want. It's really, really, really delicious. So these guys are done. So I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to strain them. Okay, I'm going to put this here, I'm going to strain these and right away put them in water that is freezing cold. Right, good. Now, on to my last recipe. I'm trying to like go a bit more quickly than I usually do. I hope it's going to work. So let me just show you, I, you know, I've showed my hummus recipe like so many times, I feel like everybody should know it. But if you're new to me <laughs> or to this YouTube channel, uh, let me show you again. So 
I used to live in Dubai, and in Dubai, uh, there's, you know, like hummus is a thing, right? Like everybody eats hummus. It's like all the cultures there uh, are into hummus, and you find it in a lot of restaurants, um, and they always make it really, really, really well, and it's very creamy, and there's very different, like a lot of different kind of versions and recipes, but this is one that I have fine-tuned, like... I've really fine-tuned and I really like it. So I'll show you the base recipe. Base recipes, I will take a can of chickpeas. Here I've got 400 grams, okay? Now, watch closely uh, because I put the chickpeas and their water, okay? Oops, okay. Now, I put that in. Then I've got tahini. I brought this tahini back from Dubai. <laughs> I still have like this one pot, um, but you know, any good quality creamy tahini works. Um, so this one is really like the staple tahini. It's not a fancy brand, but it's just really nice. So I put a quarter to a third cup. You see, I'm quite generous with the tahini. So, and I've said this before, I think one of my old videos, I even give tips on hummus. Um, those were in the like early days of me and uh, my history with hummus but like a lot of recipes they say like oh just put two tablespoons or put whatever forget it like put a good like a good quantity of this tahini okay don't listen to anybody who says to only put one or two tablespoons in my opinion then I put salt but careful with the salt because when you've got canned um, chickpeas sometimes they they've already set, have some salt added um, so I wouldn't put a lot. Here I put about a teaspoon. Now I'm going to put in, um, this is lemon juice, the juice of one lemon, okay? Ah, and then I put an ingredient that, I mean, I always put this, but, you know, you, you don't have to, but it, Adds such a nice taste, and I would really, really encourage you to, to use it. And that's cumin. Okay, so I put powdered cumin, and I'm generous with it too. Like I go kind of heavy with the with the cumin. I put like a heaping teaspoon. Um, so I put the salt. I put the lemon. The chickpea water is super important because the chickpea water will make your hummus super smooth and velvety and delicious. If you are new with the putting the chickpea water, which we also call aquafaba, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Chickpea water is actually like a thing in 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 you know healthy cuisine because um, it has there's something about it that's kind of viscous, and when it when you whip it or mix it, it becomes very creamy, um, and it's often used to make chocolate mousse instead of putting egg whites you put aquafaba and the aquafaba when you whip it with like an electric mixer like with a whip it becomes like meringue right it becomes like meringue i have an aquafaba chocolate mousse recipe on the website that i put up a while ago look it up really amazing and it makes for a very light mousse it's not like a stodgy heavy mousse it's a very light you know um i could eat the whole thing <laughs> kind of like anyways so i put it in there if you're new to it maybe don't put all the liquid right away put half of it and then you see so i've put all the essentials here you could add garlic i do not because i am not into raw garlic but some people are so do what you like um i don't put it and i really don't think you need to I haven't added olive oil uh, yet, but I will. So now I'm putting it on in the Vitamix. Oops. And then I put it on. Okay, see that? Now, 
what I'm going to do at this point, you can either serve it right away, obviously taste it, test to make sure you like it and, you know, add salt, pepper, lemon juice and cumin or whatever uh, to season. But and you could serve it like that in uh, Dubai. What I used to often do is serve it with za'atar. So za'atar is this mixture of it's like a za'atar is this wild thyme that you often find in Middle Eastern uh, cuisine, um, especially like in the Levant and like Lebanese cuisine. Um, and they dry it. Uh, you can eat it raw if you find it. You don't find it so much over here, but over there you can eat it raw like in salads. Um, but we know it mostly in the Western world as like dried up, uh, like dried thyme. Um, and then it's mixed with sesame seeds and a few other ingredients. Um, and I'll show, I'll show you, if you're not familiar with it, what it looks like. This is a uh, Palestinian za'atar. Um, it's quite, or that's, I don't know, it's called Palestinian za'atar, because that's what it was called when I bought it, but um, in bulk. <laughs> But, uh, but there's many, you know, different variations, different colors. So what I would do is I would normally serve it in a bowl, sprinkle the za'atar, and douse it with olive oil. I'm not doing that tonight because I have carrot tops that I need to use. So I've got about like two, like almost two cups. Make sure it's very dry. These are just like, this is like carrot top, right? You could part parsley. You could put... Coriander, you could, I mean, honestly, this is like the sort of thing that put, you could put kale, <laughs> you could put basil, I mean, you know, just whatever greens you're into. Um, and you put it in there and you blend more. Now, if you wanted to put other ingredients, you could. Instead of, if you don't want it to be green, you could put half a beet, cut up in little pieces, you put it in there. It can be cooked or it can be raw. Raw works too if you have a Vitamix. If you don't have a Vitamix, if it's a normal blender, then cooked beet. Um, you can put carrot, you can put sweet potato. Uh, you can, if you're putting herbs, you can also put avocado to make it like extra green. So I'm going to blitz this for another little bit. like green goddess dressing um, color and um, I just find it so pretty and hummus is one of those things like I'll serve it as an appetizer um, often and you know you can eat it with crudités or crackers or you can toast some pita bread or flat bread or whatever um, you can also serve it with like grilled meats and you know with barbecue like as a side um, and you see, it's so pretty. And often what I will do is I, um, if I'm serving it as an appetizer and we're a lot of people and I want something that looks like really pretty, um, I will make more, I'll double the recipe and then I'll put like um, chopped up herbs with chopped up cucumbers and, and tomatoes and like make a little salad and then put it on top and then with a bunch of like pita chips around and it's really pretty. But we are like you know semi-confined right now and we're in a family of four and we've got to eat like all this other food after so <laughs> i'm not gonna make a big fancy uh hummus salad on top of the hummus tonight so i do that and then i'm just gonna put a few fresh herbs and then i put loads of olive oil you see so i do put olive oil and i put quite a bit of it but i don't see that Look at that, it's so pretty. I need to show you how pretty this is. Look. You see, you see that? <gasps> so nice. And what you could also do is um, you can uh, add some pine nuts to it or like toasted nuts. Um, you could even put like toasted walnuts or like play around with it. You know, you can get so creative with hummus. Actually, and if you want, you can go, I'm just adjusting the camera here. You can go on my website, um, 
I've really got a lot of hummus recipes um, to suit every taste, you know, if you want to change it up. Um, you can infuse it with a bit more lemon and put some lemon zest. If you want something a bit more tangy, you could put smoked paprika and with a red pepper blended in. If you want something a bit more like, you know, um, like uh, spicy Mexican style, you know, um, the, you know, you, it just like you it, like go get creative with it. And it's really, really nice. Um, so there you go. Oh, and you know what? Look, I've got these wonderful broccoli sprouts oh, filled with, with sulforaphane. So broccoli sprouts are super healthy because they have this compound called or this chemical called sulforaphane, which is extremely good for you. Okay, it's like super healthy, good for the brain, good for good for like your cells and everything. And um, but you need to have broccoli sprouts anyway. So I sprinkle them on there um and there you go and you know where i bought them i bought them on saint valentine's day because they're shaped like hearts <laughs> the little leaves are shaped like hearts okay there we go so that's all for this evening if you've got any questions please comment if you'd like to have more ideas and you have specific uh, you know uh, suggestions or feedback please let me know otherwise you can find all my recipes on the website uh, it's wellmama.com, W-E-L-L-M-A-M-M-A.com. Um, also follow me on Instagram because a lot of uh, recipes sometimes I, I make kind of on the fly and I don't post them right away on the website. So you can get everything that's like fresh that I'm making today on, on Instagram stories often. Um, and there you go. So if you uh, want, you can also share this video with your friends and uh, that would be great. So have a wonderful evening, whatever you are making and whatever you're eating. All right. Bye.